And we are live and we are back. Let's go. I'm Corey, your host, one half of the Corner Full of Fat Podcast. And I'm back like I never left with another installment of Wealth Wednesdays, episode 15. Now, before I get started, for the Corner Full of Fat Podcast, we did miss last week. As I said, when Jordan can do it, we'll be recording uh, on Sundays to drop the Monday's episode. So we didn't miss last week, but he obviously is going to try to make it when he can make it all right but on wealth wednesdays for those of y'all don't know we get straight to the finance topics but on the court and full effect podcast here we discuss finances and fitness health and wealth and everything in between and we want to make sure you save more and say less and keep making better your best yes yes however before i get started make sure you hit that like button make sure you all share and subscribe make sure i leave them comments rating reviews on the podcast platforms, please help us out with the YouTube algorithms. If you have any questions, concerns, you can reach me at sideline underscore Corey. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And you can reach Jordan at Stop Stalling J on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well. And his business page is finallyfit.live on Instagram and Facebook. And then the website is finally fit. No, the website is finally fit.live. You can find him on Instagram and Facebook at finally fit. <laughs> There's so, so, so many different things. If you have any questions, concerns as far as where to find us and all of our information, it's in the show notes as well. But here on Wealth Wednesdays, there's no filler in the beginning. I just got to, I just got to fill up the first couple of minutes, so I ain't got to worry about any cussing or stuff that I do. Even though I try not to cuss, but we get straight to the finance topic. And today, y'all, where, where are we going? Shout out to the new listeners. But for those you've been tuning in since it's the 15th episode, y'all know where I'm going for the article. CNBC. And today we're going to talk about how much debt is too much. Now, a couple episodes ago, I think it was episode 12, maybe 11, 12 or 13, one of the double digit ones, where we talked about what Americans are going to do to prepare for the upcoming recession. There was a CNBC article about that. And I'm just going to pull up that article real quick before I get started. And y'all know I'll be struggle streaming. So I'm trying to get to it. Where's it at? Chrome's app. Here we go. All right, boom, delaying big purchases. So this article was from <clears throat> his last published on October 13th, last update October 17th. But the top things Americans are going to do per the CNBC article were to prepare for the recession were delaying major purchases like a home or car, paying down debt, plan to reduce holiday sp- spending, accumulate accumulating more in income more income to savings and staying in the job that they don't enjoy. But the top three things, delaying major purchases like a home or a car, paying down debt and plan to reduce holiday spending. Those are all pretty much debt focused goals, right? I mean, purchases as far as a home or a car, those usually involve debt, paying down debt involves debt and then plan to reduce holiday spending. Most people run up their credit cards for holiday spending. So the, most of those are debt focused and that's 34 plus another 29, 28. So that's 60 plus 34 i mean wait can't be 60 plus 34 i don't know how they got these percentages 30 plus 30 is 60 oh yeah plus another i don't know how they added this up regardless of the top three ones are all debt focused but now we got an article for cnbc talking about well what's up with the household debt now we talked about earlier this year as far as and those numbers probably come out again as far as the net worth in the black community has continued to go down year over year cnbc article i think it was more of a video but now we got one and this is all right y'all again i don't read these you, you know who <laughs> you know the art authors authors the authors of these articles their names be they just be pushing my my ability but let's see who we're at today but this article titled household debt soars at fastest pace in 15 years as credit card use surges, the Fed reports. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, y'all. I, I mean, this is kind of a troll last name, but we got Jeff Cox, finally, a, a name that I'm very confident in pronouncing. Okay. This came out uh, yesterday. And the key points are household and co- households increased debt at the fast pace in 15 years due to hefty increases in credit card usage. Oh, look, look how they trick us. Is credit card usage and mortgage balances. So they don't mention the mortgages, right? But they do mention the credit cards as far as the title of this article. As y'all know, coming out of the pandemic, really in the pandemic 2020, 2021, 
housing prices skyrocketed, okay? And people were buying houses without even looking at them, without even visiting them, let alone getting an inspection, okay? People were just breaking all the general practices and best rules when it comes to purchasing a house. And a lot of people overpaid for these houses, which means they got more debt. Okay, so that's what this first one is talking about. Credit card balance collectively rose more than 15% from the same period in 2021, the largest annual jump in more than 20 years, according to the New York Fed. The increase stems from a combination of robust consumer demand and higher prices, a Fed official said, aka inflation, right? The pent up demand from the pandemic, right? So purchase people were not spending money during the pandemic. I think we had one of the highest savings rates in a very long time once the pandemic kicked off. And then so that's a lot of pimped up demand because people weren't making any purchases. I that's why you see the spending rate so high. And then now that we're transitioning out as far as the lockdown, people are now making purchases. And then obviously inflation is at an all time high. I don't know if it's the highest ever, but it is I think it's fighting for it. I haven't looked at the most recent numbers. I know I think it did it go down this month. That's neither here nor there right now. Okay, here we go. Households. Increased debt during the third quarter. You know it is. I only got one eye, so I'm taking a breath. I can read. But their debt increased during the third quarter at the fast pace in 15 years. Okay, we keep seeing that. Mortgage balances. All right, boom. Total debt jumped from $350 billion from uh, July to September. The largest nominal quarterly increase since 2007. Uh, okay, remember 2007 is a big year, right? 2007. That's coming up on that, that big mortgage crisis. Okay. It's crazy that 2007 was 15 years ago. That makes me feel old. Bringing, <laughs> bringing the collective household IOU. Oh, oh I, th I think they're saying as in debt. <laughs> bringing the collective, that was an acronym, uh, in the U.S. to a fresh $16.5 trillion. That's an increase of 2.2% from the previous quarter and 8.3% from a year ago. The increase follows a $310 billion jump in the second quarter. Oh. Shout out to the ad. $310 billion jump in the second quarter and represents a 1.2. So, okay, just another large, big number increase. It's gone up. The debt has surged over the past year, all right, due to inflation near its highest pace, right? More than 40 years. There we go. So, near its highest pace, right? 40 years, by the way, back to when Carter was president in the 80s. My goodness. I think that was hyperinflation. Those numbers were crazy back when the mortgage rates were double digits. Okay. So, mortgage rates, the Fed just increased. I think another 0.75 basis points again, right? So the mortgage rates are continue to increase. We start seeing this is what it looked like back in 2007, or this is what it looked like back in the in the 80s. Okay, so things are starting right. Remember, history repeats itself. Amid the rise, uh, the rise in interest rates and strong consumer demand. Oh, Ma Mastercard, <laughs> Mastercard drop. <laughs> MasterCard dropped uh, the consumer spending. All right, MasterCard got all the information. By the way, MasterCard is a tech stock, so is Visa. But MasterCard dropped all that information on consumer spending. They said people was out here running up the bag. It's not their bag because it's debt, but they running it up. The biggest contributors to the debt load came from obviously mortgage balances, which rose from one trillion from a year ago. Hold up. The biggest contributor, the biggest contributor to the debt load came from mortgage balances, which rose 1 trillion. Okay, I thought it rose, saying it rose from a 1 trillion. Okay, it rose a trillion dollars <laughs> to 11.7 trillion. I was about to say it was 10, 10 trillion of mortgages. Oh my goodness. And credit card debt, which climbed to 930 billion. I think the only thing that's less than mortgages, I mean, I think the only thing that's more than credit card debt um, is mortgages, obviously, and then student loans. Oh, is there is there a student loan update? No update on the student loans. We just, I'm just letting that play out. Because, uh, yeah, I, I was waiting till that officially drops so I can just do all that at one time. But, um, okay, yeah, credit card debt creeping up on a trillion dollars. The credit card balance collectively rose right 15% from the same time period in 2021, the largest annual jump again in 20 years, or at least by New York Fed. Increased towers over the past, right, yeah, 18 years. Okay, it's just saying it keeps going up. Credit card, mortgage, and auto loan balances continue to increase. Okay, now see, and this is where it gets see, and this is the misleading stuff. They're just saying, all right, the headline is credit cards increased. Then the next, the next sentence, as far as key points, it says that. That's why you got. This is why. This is why I can read things. All right, so you got to read y'all. Household debt increases, right? Credit card usage. That's what it says. Okay, it's like okay, credit cards, credit cards, and you know, holiday season. But now it's saying the first key point: credit card and mortgage balances. 
Then when we get down here, credit card, mortgage, and auto loan balances. We've all, we had a third debt to it, credit card, mortgage, auto loan balances. Now, there's no student loans here. I'm not sure if student loans are calculating household debt. They probably are. But continue to increase in the third quarter of 2022, reflecting the combination of robust consumer demand and higher prices. Not, not only robust consumer demand, but when it comes to uh, the housing market and the um, uh, the car market, right? You got um, low, low supply there. Okay, definitely the car market still. Because you see, first time ever, I believe that used cars were increasing in value, which is not how the car market works. Okay, said, okay, here we go. Another name, y'all, Dong Hong Lee, economic researcher. He's the one that said that credit card mortgages and auto balances were increasing in the third quarter of 2022. He's an economic research advisor at the New York Fed. Again, some more New York Fed information. So first, the New York Fed is saying that, you know, credit cards are increasing as far as household debt. Then they're saying, well, credit cards and mortgages. Now, you know, they're saying, well, credit card mortgages and auto balances. So, okay, all the debt is increasing. So the student, the student loan debt's going up too. So all the types of debt that people have are increasing, y'all. How wonderful. However, new mortgage or originations have slowed to pre-pandemic levels amid rising interest rates. New York Fed researchers attribute the credit card growth to very robust okay, again, consumption, again, inflation. You have substantial levels of savings that remain. So now, see, and that that's where it gets confusing. So this kind of slightly doesn't make any sense, but it does. New York Fed researchers attributed the credit card growth, so just credit cards here, to very robust consumption. Makes sense. Rising prices makes sense. And consumers using substantial levels of savings that remain on accounts. Well, your credit card debt shouldn't go up if you're using your savings. Okay, now people spend more money as far as on plastic and they you know as far as versus cash and the debit card and the credit card you spend more money as you go from cash to debit card from debit card to credit card but if you're using money that's in your bank account your your credit card that should not go up right because you got that cash right there even though you might still be spending more let's say you got a thousand dollars saved and then you go and make a twelve hundred dollar purchase on your credit card right so now you got two hundred dollars in credit card debt that might be the logic there along with the rise in balances is common in <laughs> Oh, uh, along with the rise in balances has come an increase in delinquencies. <laughs> yes, people's wages are not matching, you know, with inflation. And on top of that, people's debt is increasing. So if the necessities increase and the debt payments are increasing and the income is not, uh, it's going to you know make it hard to make some of these minimum payments. However, while the delinquency rates are rising, they remain low by historical standards. Okay, that's a good thing. It suggests consumers are managing the finances through the period of increasing prices. All right. Oh. Elsewhere in the poor, okay, the Fed loans. All right. Oh, here we go. About the auto loan balances. They went to 1.5 trillion while student loan, student loans are at 1.57. Okay, so car loans are above credit cards as well. So you got mortgages at 11 trillion. Then you got student loans at 1.57 trillion. And then see car loans, that's crazy. At 1.52 trillion. See, so we don't, and you know. You can bankrupt car loans, right, as well as mortgage. But I don't think enough people put the pressure on car loans. We talk about the student loan issue. The student loan issue is the student loan debt and the car loan debt's the freaking same. Shout out to them uh, five, uh, uh, what is that, uh, $50 billion there in the Delta. My goodness. I did not know car loan debt was that much, as you can see, because I said only student loans outside of mortgages were higher than credit cards. We got car loans and student loans just running a race. That's crazy. Student loan debt is the lowest since the second quarter of 2021 and been an extended period. Okay, yeah, student loan debt is uh, decreasing, right? Because people aren't having that interest tacked on. But <laughs> depending if they start back up, that's going to start spiking again, even though they have things in the works too sort of help how the interest is um, accruing, but we won't really see how that works until it happens. Again, I'll discuss all this when I do the student loan episode once everything flushes out. Yep, and then I'll see the little drop if the forgiveness does come through. Our loan debt, while posting only a slight increase on a quarterly basis, is up 5.6% from a year ago, which makes sense, right? The used car market went, went up in value as far as those vehicles, and then used car prices, right? I mean, excuse me, new car prices, you know, go up as well because of that. Mortgage balances continue to grind higher. We're going to start uh, interest rate increases on 30-year mortgages. Loan rates higher. They have around, so yes, 30-year mortgages are saying are having around 7%. Total debt climbed, even though originations fell sharply, dropping nearly 17% to $633 billion. 
So saying the debt climbed, even though originations fell. Okay. Okay, foreclosures remain low even as pandemic-related moratorium expires. Student loan delinquent rates remain at 4%. Boom. I went on an article and some music started playing. Okay, that's a, that's a weird way just to end it. All right, y'all. So, again, this article by Jeff Cox is saying that household debt soars at fastest pace in 15 years due to credit card usage from the Fed, New York Fed, particularly. However, as you continue to read this article, they're saying, well, you know, the mortgage debt has gone up as well. Um, and then the car loan debt has gone up as well. Where's the car loan? The car loan, auto loan balances has gone up as well. And then they said, um, oh, yeah, don't, don't forget about the student loan debt. It went up too. <laughs> the four main types of debt that people have, their mortgage, credit cards, car loans, and student loans. Obviously, for mortgage, put that to the side because we don't consider that consumer debt. And since I'm talking about aggressively paying off your debt, most people consider the high interest rate debt. And this is where it gets confusing. Okay. A lot of people are going to have to start explaining what you're supposed to do with your mortgage when they say pre these high interest rates. Yeah. Anything above five, six percent, you need to aggressively pay off. That's what we consider high interest rate. Well, now people's mortgages are there. Now, if you're over the mindset, you just don't cons consider your mortgage in the um, debt at all, as far as aggressively paying it off. That's one thing, but simple logic, most people's high interest rate debt over that, you know, six, 7% number is just only going to be credit cards. So really they're just speaking to credit cards in that case. Some people and my son, you know, a good amount of people, they got very high interest rates on their cars. I've seen it, but for, for a good amount of people, when you're talking about that high interest rate date, debt, those people, that mindset, they're majority talking about credit cards, it's credit cards, get you know, double digits, right? And some people even, you know, as far as you know, 20% plus they're saying, yeah, you got to knock that out, out the way. But now we're seeing, you know, Mortgages creeping up on that six, seven percent. What are we gonna do if mortgages start getting to eight, nine percent? Like, what are those people gonna say? Right? Like, should you aggressively pay off your mortgage now too? Right? Because you you didn't say whether it was mortgage or not mortgage, you just said high interest rate that. All right. And then the big thing here, too. I think the biggest thing from this article, I might have to do a little bit more research on this, is this right here. Auto loan balances. Let me highlight a little bit better. The Fed said that the auto loan balances are as far as the total, is at 1.52 trillion dollars. And student loans are at 1.57 trillion. So we have a, you know, the keeping up the Joneses is usually marked by people's vehicles. Y'all got to do something about these car loans. Let me see if I can find out real quick. Average new car loan payment. Good God. I got to share the screen. Oh my God. This is insane. Y'all, when y'all see this number, I'm about to wrap up. This car loan price is crazy. Crazy. Oh, it's not. Where's that? Dang it. Let me just share my whole screen. Y'all, look at this car loan price. Average new car loan payment. This is from bank rate as of August. The average monthly car payment for new cars is $667. My goodness. Can y'all see the calculator? All right. The Roth IRA limit is increasing to $6,500. traditional as well, but I'll get into that later when I do end of year wrap-up on stuff. But if you do, you know, 12 months, it's... All right, y'all. I'm not going to get into going crazy about the debt. So, um, again, CNBC article saying that people are preparing for the recession by delaying major purchases like a home or car. Mind you, we've been, in, quote, unquote, in a recession I mean, the stock market's been going down this whole year, but, you know, roughly speaking since at least, right, June slash July, right, the first, you know, two quarters of this year, we quote, quote, have been in a recession, even though, though they did not announce it. But they're saying that people have been preparing for this recession by essentially making sure they're decreasing slash avoiding debt slash as much debt as possible. But then they're saying, well, the debt, the debt increased. <laughs> the debt has increased. Did I stop sharing my screen? Is this still showing? What's it doing? There we go. All right, y'all. So um, first thing I recommend, get on a budget, right? Second thing, well, budget and track your transactions. Second thing is define how you want to handle debt and handle it that way. How you should prioritize your budget is necessities, debt payments, investments, lifestyle in that order. Highly recommend you aggressively pay off your debt, as we've been saying for over, over a year now. It's probably getting close to 18 months now. Highly recommend you pay off the debt. Highly recommend it. Um, the debt is increasing as you are seeing inflation is at an 
all time high or close to it. Interest rates, as far as mortgages, continuing to increase, regardless if you're getting a COLA cost of living adjustment, right? As far as your raise, anything like that, multiple streams of income, et cetera, et cetera, you need to eliminate the debt. Okay, got to eliminate the debt, y'all. But all right, very, very interesting article. I love doing them live and not reading them. So I'm like, okay, credit card debt increase. No, they said credit card mortgages, car loans, and student loans. Oh, by the way, car loan debt is pretty much the exact same as student loan debt. At least you can bankrupt the car loans, right? But all right, y'all, that's it. Locked and loaded. Dang, I don't got a soundboard. I wish I had a soundboard. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to myself, Silent underscore Corey, and Jordan to stop Silent J. We on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. All of our information is the show notes for Jordan's training information. You can go to finallyfit.live or you can go to Finally Fit on Instagram and Facebook for myself, my financial coaching, $50 for one one-hour session a month or $100 for up to one one-hour session a week. Again, all of our information is in the show notes. And any questions or concerns, please shoot them our way. As y'all know, y'all need to like, share, and subscribe. Shout out to the YouTube algorithm. Please help us out. And please leave them rating reviews on the podcast platforms as well. All right, y'all, that's it. So remember to save more and say less and keep making better your best. And I will catch y'all in the next one.